Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the March 2024 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. The beginning of the month is always an exciting time here on my channel. It is when I debut the newest free printable in my sheet load of cards series. Yesterday, I shared a look with you at the new March 2024 sheet load of cards, showed you my first set, and told you how you could download the printable. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check out the description box below. Today, I'm here to show you how I made my first set, and I'll be giving you some tips along the way. Also, my team of collaborators will be joining me and sharing theirs. To see what everyone has created, including our March 2024 guest artist, I have a playlist in the description box below for the YouTube team and a link to the Instagram team members' creations. I hope that you'll go check those out, see what they created, and leave them some love. I also have individual channel and account links down in the description box if you would rather hop along that way. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by. In yesterday's video, I did share about the main products that I'll be using today. And as I get in today's process, I'll tell you about those again and any other products or tools that I use. Now, as always, if I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna get started today by cutting my three pattern papers per the cutting guide on the printable. The papers I'm using this month are from P13's Spring is Calling line. To get started, I'm gonna be cutting rows starting from the top two at four inches and two at two inches. Now, because this will take up the entire 12 inches, make sure not to do what I call a generous cut. Cut right at the four or two inches or just a hair under it. Once we have those rows cut, I'm gonna take the top two and cut those down. These will have two pieces that are four inches wide and two pieces that are one and a quarter inches wide. Again, you don't have to remember any of these dimensions because they will be on that free printable. Once you've cut your pieces A and B from that first row, there will be a little bit left over at the end. And if you take a look at the printable, I do have some suggestions of how you could use this to decorate the inside. I cut the next four inch tall row in that same way, once again, reserving that scrap at the end. Now I'm gonna bring in the remaining two two inch tall rows and cut each of those into two pieces that are three and a half inches wide. And these will be for pattern paper piece C. Now again, there is some left over at the end and on the printable, you'll see my suggestion. I will also be showing you at the end of the video what it looks like when I use these scraps to decorate the inside. I finished off camera cutting those remaining two pattern papers in this same way. My next step was to cut the CS1 cardstock, which the printable calls for one and a half sheets that you cut into 12 total, three and three quarter inch by two and a quarter inch pieces. To get started, I cut my cardstock into strips that are three and three quarters inches wide. Then I'm gonna rotate those and cut them to two and a quarter inches tall until I get 12 total. While I cut those pieces, I wanted to take a minute to recognize some special channel members. 
in the month of February, I had some of them earn their one year membership badge. So scrolling up on screen now are their names. I wanna say a great big thank you for your continued support and thanks as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and sheet load of cards free for all subscribers. If you'd like to learn more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box. Next for cardstock, I'm going to cut my sentiment pieces CS2, which are three and a half by three quarters inches. The printable calls for a half sheet, but today I'm going to be using some white scraps that I had left in my stash. I'm going to start by cutting these to three quarters of an inch wide, and then once I have that done, I turn them and I cut them to three and a half inches wide. Now, if your sentiment needs a different size piece or you don't want to add this, you know, wide skinny sentiment, you can definitely change the sheet load up for your needs. And finally for cardstock on this, I'm going to make my card bases. Now the printable does show white card bases and if I use those, normally I would just pull from my stash. But since I am using this prickly pear cardstock from Gina K Designs, I thought I would show you how I make my card bases. These are super simple. You just take your six sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, cut them in half to five and a half inches wide. Now you could go ahead and fold this by hand if you wanted to, but I brought in my score buddy. I added a score line at four and a quarter inches, and then I folded these and reinforced that edge with my bone folder. And now I have 12 card bases all ready for today's cards. Now all of the pieces are cut, so I'm gonna do a little assembly. To get started, I will be putting pattern paper piece C onto the CS1 mat. This just gets adhered flat down to the center and there's a nice even border all the way around. I add these, most of them off camera, but I did do a couple here on camera so you can see what all three patterns look like. Once all of those pieces were matted, it was time to put my card kits together. I just wanna make sure that I have all the pieces I'll need for the final cards before I start adhering. For this first one, I'm gonna take a floral for piece A, the green for piece B, and then the center piece will be the yellow. Now for the second card, you can do that same exact pattern or you can switch it up a little bit. You'll see here that I have switched up the background pieces A and B. Now for your final four using the yellow card at the front, you can decide which you want to do. For me, I'm going to do two of each card pattern. So I finished getting those together and I will show you the rest of the process in case you want to watch it, but I'll just put on a little music. For the background of the card, pieces A and B get butted up against each other so there's an even border all the way around. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this to try not and get any overlap. The first way I'm gonna show you is just when I take pattern paper piece A and adhere it separately to the left side of the card front, trying to get an even border on the outer edges. Then I add adhesive to the back of piece B, which in this case, it's the yellow strip. And I put this right up against piece A that I just put down and then press that down in place. Now, the one thing you might get here is an uneven border on the right. If it's too little, 
Uh oh, if it's too big, I would have just chopped it down. Once those two pieces are in place, you just take your matted pattern paper piece C and add that to the center of the card front, doing your best to get even borders all the way around. The second way you can do this is what I believe a channeled member told me in last month's live was called welding. What you're going to do is use a piece of tape and flip your pattern papers over and adhere the two together just putting that where they meet up. This way, after you add the adhesive and go to take this to your card front, even if it's a little bit off in measurement, you can do your best to get even borders all the way around. You can choose whichever way works best for you. They will end up looking pretty much the same. Let me know what you do decide to do in that comment section below. For me, I decided to go with the first way, just adhering the two pieces separately um, because mine were looking pretty good with the even borders and I figured, like I said before, I could chop off any excess on the right if there was a bigger margin there. I finished adhering those pieces until all 12 card fronts were completed and here is a look at those. Now it's time to work on the sentiment piece or the focal area and this is going to be one of those places where you can switch it up and make it your own. For instance, for me, instead of stamping my sentiment on that piece, I'm going to be doing a little die cutting and stamping using this Hero Arts Stampin' Cuts. The first thing I'm going to do is take that Hello die off camera and cut out 12 of those. Once those were finished, I brought back in my CS2 cardstocks for the sentiment and all the goodies I'll need for stamping. And that's Gina K Designs Prickly Pear Ink, that Stampin' Cut set, and a Mini Misty. I'm going to stamp just a note to say over on the left so that later I can put those die cut hellos on the right. Now because of the little flourish at the bottom of the H, I did end up moving my sentiment to the upper left corner of CS2. That way everything would fit nicely. Once that was in place, I decided to go ahead and bring in the magnet for my Misty to hold this down, just in case I had to stamp the sentiment twice. But luckily, after the first inking and stamping, it looked great. Once everything was set up, it was super easy to finish stamping the 11 remaining pieces. I don't know about you, but my stamp positioner is one of my favorite and most used tools. Once both parts of the sentiment were ready, I started getting them put on the card fronts. The stamped piece went flat down across pattern paper piece C, and then I used some Barely Art liquid glue, and I held the Hello die cuts with some reverse tweezers and got those put onto the card fronts as well. I did let these sit under a stamp block for about five minutes to let them dry completely. While those dried, I worked on decorating the inside of the cards. I cut pieces of white cardstock that were five inches by three and three quarters, so my personal message was easy to see. And now I'm gonna decorate per those optional instructions on the printable. Once the white cardstock was decorated, I then added these to the inside of my cards. While I was off camera adding those to the insides, I also added my personalized stamp to the back. I wanted to finish the cards off with a little sparkle, so I brought in Diamond Dots. It's number 5001. They're kind of white and iridescent, so they'll pick up the colors from the card. To add these, I used Barely Art Liquid Glue, and I put five drops on the front of the card from the upper left to the bottom right. I let that get tacky for five to 10 seconds, and then using my little rainbow jewel picker, I picked up a diamond dot and added one to each of the glues. I finished decorating the rest of these off camera, and here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the March 2024 sheet load of cards printable. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit our guest artist and collaboration team creations by using those links down in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.